all right. Well, it's going down. It's going down? Well, how much do you, what, you got rocks in your pocket or something? You're going, you're sinking. Don't worry about it. You'll be just fine. We only got a couple minutes more, right? Okay, now we're going to do this top ten list. This is when we get really funny now. Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> Oh. Yeah, I see now. Okay, you know, the guy's probably got money. And then we did this. If I were a rich man. Sounds like the Flint. I R Floyd R Turbo, and the R stands for real deal. And I am an American patriot, Genosha citizen. On the bank of the harbor stood Mayor Bosman. Young Indian brave on the other side of the harbor stood a warrior just as brave, Jimmy Cruiser. Yeah. Oh! All the draws. Barnack, a little flashy there. Um, you guys got one more song to, to, and then you can, I guess then this wraps it up for, to, boy, I'm just, I got nothing left here, so. Um, Anyway, we'll see you all next week, and we'll go back to Unplugged here. <laughs> <laughs> hey, good evening, Kenosha, and welcome to the October 22nd edition of the Kenosha Today Show. We have a pretty good, uh, well, we, that's better than pretty good. We have a, Put your microphone on. <laughs> <laughs> see the note? You know, I see the note here, but that was for something else. Jeez. You, Jeez, we, like I said, we, <laughs> we have a pretty good show planned for you tonight. Um, did I fail to say it? It was October 22nd. <laughs> hey, you're the director. You should have done sound checks. You did? Well, just how come I don't have one? So how am I coming through? You know, there, there you have it. And he joining me. As he figured he, he couldn't hear you. It was perfect. I can't believe it. I, can't. I wrote a note right here, but that was for this uh, other deal. Uh, at any rate, uh, joining me as he does each and every Wednesday, uh, our uh, co-host, the Lonesome Dove, Mr. Pat Garrett, joins us. And the crowd, what do we got in here tonight? A couple hundred or uh, whatever. And uh, we have a, uh, we're we going to talk about some things, and you have your message of hope and inspiration. We have a great top ten. And then, hey, our boy Floyd R. Turbo with his editorial is going to be here. And then we'll show you the last half of the uh, uh, weekend report. Uh, that uh, airs on WIP on 10 a.m. every Saturday morning with Steve Casey. A uh, couple announcements here. The first one, American Legion Post 21, the Haunted Hall, and they're open for tours uh, down at the American Legion, October 24th, 5th, and 6th from 7 to 10, October 30th and 31st from 7 to 11. Uh, adults, which would be, well, uh, adults are five dollars. Children, that would be like uh, us three. And five and under, uh, they, they get uh, in free. And so the uh, Legion Post 21 is downtown, 504 58th Street. And if you've got any questions, you can call Woody, and you just have to call it down there. Uh, now, this was an article that was in the uh, Milwaukee Journal Sentinel on Sunday, and this was given to me by my good friend Mike Bjorn. And uh, they did this, Kenosha Streetcars offer a travel history lesson. Go See? It's actually... A too, a too big deal here. And so these two gals, uh, they were reporting for the Milwaukee Journal Sentinel, came down. And this picture here, uh, Ron, was provided by uh, the Kenosha uh, Convention and Tourism, this, this one year, riding through Harbor Park. Now, this one, <laughs> these two, were taken by them. Now, you see this first one on the top here. This is a picture of the trolley. And as you can see, uh, other than the driver, there's not a whole lot of people on this. And as you can see by uh, the picture, maybe, hey, go to three once. Maybe I can try to get this in here. Uh, uh, that's not bad. But on picture three, here's a picture uh, from the rear. It's all decorated in um, Halloween stuff. And here's one gal in the driver. And I guess the caption, he's, he's on their microphone saying no pushing and shoving. And uh, she's... <laughs> Where is everybody? What is so, that, gravestones, headstones yeah, I, and stuff I, I, in there? So they, <laughs> it's a graveyard. <laughs> I'm so serious. The Milwaukee Journal Sentinel did this big of an article in their Sunday section. And in there was uh, 
uh, quotes from the, uh, uh, the guy that runs the trolleys that says 50,000 people do this, and it's really not a um, transportation. Uh, it's more for the locals uh, for just more of an amusement thing. This, folks, is what we're spending. Three million of ours and eight million, also of ours, just coming out of a different pocket, to, to extend this, <laughs> to get more of this, Ron. I mean, uh, no pushing and shoving, no waiting. So I, that's, I guess I bring this, and thank you for Mike Bjorn for bringing that up. Uh, and here, speaking about money well spent, the Unified wants us to, did we talk about this last week? Yeah, they're gonna have a, a, a proposed referendum for almost $17 million for new uh, upgrades in the Unified School District, primar primarily a sports uh, facilities. And I, from what I understand, our, uh, our boy, correspondent, Floyd R. Turbo, is going to address this issue. So um, I don't know that <laughs> well, you live in Pleasant Prairie. This is going to affect you. It's going to affect me? Well, you vote, don't you? And you pay I taxes, sure do. don't you? Well, kind of, on the side, a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Let me I go sure back do. to my first question. You're a resident of Pleasant yes, Prairie. Yes, I right? am. Well, the people, the good people in Pleasant Prairie are, you know, they pay taxes and they would be, so anyway, Floyd's gonna uh, address this. Uh, the second thing is the city council is gonna back the county's uh, plan for the Wi-Fi, and I don't understand why we need Wi-Fi, and I'm kinda on the mayor's side on this deal, because everybody in the downtown's got Wi-Fi. That, it's a freebie. Why are we spending all this money, uh, why do we have to spend $10,000 to, uh, of city money, and the county wants to add up a huge sum of, sum of money, about 100 grand, to put in Wi-Fi when it's already there. You can go into any business in the downtown and have Wi-Fi. Pretty much, yeah. And yeah. so what are you gonna do? Uh, put in Wi-Fi and go sit on 6th Avenue in the dead of winter going, hey, where's my Wi-Fi? Just go in the building, for God's sake. <laughs> Again, um, I think uh, Floyd R. Turbo is going to address that plan. Uh, so I don't understand this. Now, I think what you ought to watch is, and uh, we're gonna get to this next topic here in a minute, is the, the money the city and the county is going to put into this new uh, downtown Inc. director. That's our taxpayers' money, and the component is the city, the county, and uh, assessments for the downtown bid, CAB, and the Chamber of Commerce. Those two aren't taxpayers' entities, but we are. And we're gonna get to this because in the paper today, the, uh, they just named a new uh, downtown development director, uh, and he's coming, Chris Nauman, and I've never met him, but he comes from Green Bay. Now what I was able to do is I got this article that was written by Deneen Smith of the Kenosha News, and then I compared it to Bill Guida's article in this morning's paper, and the other one by Deneen Smith was written in probably early May when uh, Violet Rooker was appointed. Now, I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna read some quotes from this, and you tell me, was this uh, Rooker or Nauman? Okay. Now, you follow this pretty close, all right? right? I'll try. Yeah, here we go. The very first thing I will be doing will be meeting with all the downtown property owners. Now, is that Ricker or Nauman? It's kind of hard for me to not know which one because I'm sitting right here. Yeah, well, just... I watched which one you read it from. Well, just, <laughs> I was trying not to. Play, I was play looking on, the other way. Okay, play, play along. Ron, do we have any replacement <laughs> for this? Back then? Okay, well, all right. Just look on the... Uh, so, I read it, and you don't know which one. So, which one do you think it was? Ricker <laughs> Or Nauman? I'd say it would just have to absolutely be uh, the you, new guy. You got one of choice, sure. two choices. Okay. Yeah, the new guy, because, you know, he hasn't done anything yet, right? Well, uh, right. But actually, that was coincidentally a quote from this article and a quote from this article. Uh, but, let me read another like the one. Same, huh? Yeah, Energy and passion for downtowns and ability to work with business owners and property owners and other community interests. Ricker or Nauman? They just, uh, you know. Bingo! The same, same you say? Yes. yes. I, yeah, pretty <laughs> much. These were a year and a half apart. In Kenosha, I see this wonderful infrastructure and surplus available buildings. You're not supposed to be looking here. Oh, yeah, that's right. Uh, mm -hmm. And museums. That's something I would like to have here. We don't say where. Ricker or Nauman? Oh, I know this one. It's Nauman. Wrong. <laughs> 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 oh, medical marijuana breath. <laughs> it's both. They had both said that. Mm. Um, 
Uh, I will do everything I can to make myself accessible as I can to everyone in Kenosha. Ricker or Nauman? Both. Both. You are right, old um, skunk, Peanut skunk chairman. Yeah, there you <laughs> go. Yeah. You Man have to. The all right. Old great and wise. Yeah, old great and wise. You have to work with the community on the options and bring everyone to the table. That's not always easy. Uh, Ricker or Nauman? I think it's, you know, again, I'm going to have to go with the, all of the above. All of the above, it is. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think I got this down. You think you're, <laughs> well, I guess you're getting my, my drift here. Two articles written by two different people, about two different people, but the concept of the Downtown Inc. is, uh, I mean, it's the same thing. So what have, we, what have we done here? And my point is, Downtown Inc. is a for-profit company, and I'm not personally too thrilled to my tax dollars going to a for-profit company uh, when we can't get any information from them. Because as we know, Violet Richter left, and we tried to find out why she left, and we don't know why she left. So we'll see what happens. And then, you know what? Here's my other question in closing with this deal. Where are they going to pay this guy out of uh, some kind of trolley driver's slush fund? <laughs> I mean, this is how they, they play this shell game with us, with our tax money. And uh, I just hope that for those people that are in the budget process, that we are able to, uh, and if we're putting tax dollars and tax assessment dollars into this downtown Inc., which is a for-profit, that we pay close attention so that we know what's the deal. Okay. Now, since we, uh, boy, I, I did it, was I working up the sweater? I got I think, And I thanks for your input, Ron. You and, you, and, yeah. you and Pat, your input on this was uh, uh, less than startling. But you know, uh, we trained. Long and hard for these positions. But the problem, we train after the show. <laughs> yeah. Long and hard. <laughs> now, as everybody knows, and it's fall, and we're about uh, 10 days before Halloween. And so, uh, you know, the, the colors are changing, the leaves are changing, and it's, it was very warm. It's supposed to be nice. And uh, this is one of a segment. We haven't done this. You know it's fall in Kenosha when? All now, right. that's your lines. That's my line? Okay. Now, all right. So I say, you, you know, you know, it's fall in Kenosha when you and your wife stay married for the sake of the dogs. See now. Oh, by the way, how's the squeeze doing? Oh, she's wonderful. You're not, you're not going to get married, uh, Jeff, for the sake of the dogs, no, right? No oh, dogs. Don't tell me. No dogs. Oh, no dogs. <laughs> okay. Go ahead. You know. <laughs> you know. Oh, you. Uh, <laughs> sorry, you got me thinking about my sweetie. Yes. <laughs> Just so true. Try not to work up a ladder here. What is it? You follow the thing. You know it's fall in Kenosha. Kenosha. Oh, you when know it's fall in Kenosha when... People don't recognize your car without a dead animal on the hood. Uh, now, see, a lot of that could refer to hunters. Sure. But there's a lot of roadkill to be picked there up. Is, because there October is, is uh, roadkill month. Lots of roadkill uh, in the uh, grill. Right. Okay, go ahead. And on the grill. You know it's fall in Kenosha when... Your grandmother can reload her own shotgun shells. Let's speed this up right. a little bit. You know what's falling Kenosha when? No. <laughs> you ever shot a beer can while someone else was drinking out of it? You ever done that? <laughs> been uh, there. Ever, ever, been there, done that. Been huh? there. <laughs> okay. You know what's falling Kenosha when? Uh, your hobbies require dogs and a lantern. That's, that's like at Ron's house. You know, he yeah. had the skunk problem and sure. calls, city, calls the city uh, animal control and he put, got put on a waiting list. And because there was only 17. Uh, a skunk cages no. because they were all the 17. Hey, what a coincidence. We only have 17 skunk cages and we have 17 city aldermen. Is there, yeah. a, there must be a Some sort uh, of correlation, correlation there, there. Huh? Uh, okay. You know, it's fall in Kenosha when you finally learned how to milk a goat. Now on Pleasant Prairie, you have goat milking is probably running rampant over there. Sure. Sure. It's a, <laughs> uh, you know, it's a required course in uh, grade school. Okay. I've heard well, we've got a couple more. I don't know. I didn't go to grade school. Okay. Uh, well, so, I went uh, and, uh, you know it's Kenosha. You know, it's okay, fall that's in, right. You know it's, it's fall in Kenosha when? You and your dog are in the same medication. <laughs> yeah. So if you're going to be marrying for the dog, make sure you and the yeah. dog are. Uh, yeah, we both like catnip. Yeah, catnip. Oh. oh. <laughs> All right, we got two more here. Uh, uh, okay, here. You know it's fall in Kenosha when? You can play the Star Spangled Banner on your turkey call. Really? You know, really? da, 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 something like that, right? Uh, uh, then, uh, let's just use one more here. Okay. Oh, no, here, I've got two more. Two more? <laughs> 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 yes, yes. 
<clears throat> All right. All right. You know it's fall in Kenosha when your fishing license is more precious to you than your marriage license. So mm. there's a there's a, a good example. It's the only license I can get anymore. Which fishing, fishing. or marriage? Oh, so marriage is out. So you and the squeeze aren't going to be tying the knot. That um, you know, right? Well, not until I get my rights back. You're right. Right. My marriage rights. Oh. <laughs> How do you get your merits rights? This is not I like no. I you know, I'm just like making this up, man. In order, if you have, I can see. <laughs> you know, you have a driver's. Listen, listen, man. You have a driver's license, and let's say you, as you probably know, you get it suspended. So <laughs> you get your driving license back. More so often but than I get it. But when you lose a marriage license, other than say yippee, good for me. I mean, what else is it? Okay. All right. This is the last one. All right. You know your. <laughs> wait. You know it's fall. In Kenosha. in Kenosha when you list your dogs as dependents on your tax return. OK, that was just we were just trying to enlighten it. It wasn't really all that uh, hilarious, but uh, <laughs> I don't know. It had its moments. <laughs> it had its moments. What time did it? it killed all oh, 15 minutes. All right. What we're going to do is uh, why don't you we're going to do the top 10 and then you will you have a message of hope and inspiration. Sure. And then uh, Floyd Arturbo will join us and then we get back to the. Um, uh, 30 minutes of uh, the Saturday radio show. So, um. you, you got that? <laughs> Come on. Just. <laughs> Come on, guys. This ain't that easy. This is, uh, you know. <laughs> All right. Written in our home office on the deck at the Boathouse Pub and Eatery. Tonight's top 10 category. See, you should have, the best thing that you probably should have done, Ron, is tell me, leave the microphone yeah. off. The mic like, sounds good. Yeah. yeah. Sounds good. Top 10 good things about Halloween here in Kenosha. All we right. tried to enlighten you about the, you know, it's fall in Kenosha, but these are the top 10 good things about Halloween here in Kenosha. Number 10, all the snow in the 17th district is fully plowed. Number nine, it's going to be held on the 4th of, with the 4th of July parade on the first Sunday in June. That's when we do things in yeah, Kenosha. Um, yeah. Yeah, on the 4th of uh, Number eight. New director of Downtown Inc. of flying over 6th Avenue on a broomstick filled with super glue. Well, welcome to town. <laughs> Number seven. Uh, the $16 million school district referendum will bring a whole new meaning to the word trick and treat. Treating. Trick and trick, treating. Trick and, trick and treating. Mm -hmm. Number six. Great way for all the snot those little kids to get more cavities. Yeah, fill them up with candy. Amen. Fatten them up and get more can uh, cavities. Yeah, in. yeah, yeah. Uh, Number five. Trolley drivers have scared all the riders away, as we saw in this picture provided Mike Bjorn. Uh, that's, there's yeah. no, uh, the trolley drivers, uh, that's good. That's because it's Halloween. Number four, city's new Wi-Fi plan is the ghost of cyber goblins past. Now, there's some sophistication that I tried to bring uh, to the, the, the table here. Number three, all the potholes must leave their porch lights on. Now, you know, if you're having trick-or-treaters, and these potholes, some of them, they got gift shops. Yeah. I mean, they, they you can got... You lose your kid. They got <laughs> exit ramps and entrance ramps to get in and out of these yeah. things. are so big. Uh, number two, uh, witches and zombies help pay off Scott's Boathouse bar tab. Now, it's about time that somebody is going to ante up, step forward, and help me. You feel sorry for me, don't you? I really do. I really do. Yeah. Okay. And the number one good thing about Halloween here in Kenosha... The new statue of Dr. Instruction in Civic Center Park. You know, it's a long there you overdue. Go. You know, they were looking for something to do that. All right, so uh, Pat's going to play his message of hope and inspiration. And then we're going to be back with uh, Floyd R. Turbo in his editorial. Mm. Oh, what happened here, Ron? <laughs> oh, I got it. Hold on. Hang on. Oh, yeah, oh, whoop, dip. <laughs> 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 All right, is that me? This thing on? From the corners of the country, from the cities and the farms, we years and years of living tucked up underneath their arms. They walked away from everything just to see a dream come true. So God bless the boys who make the noise on 16th Avenue. Well, we're the million dollar spirit and no flat top guitar. They drive to town with all they own in a hundred dollar car. Cause one time someone told them about a friend of a friend they knew. 
who owns you know a studio on 16th Avenue. Well, some are born to money, they never had to see survive. And others swing a nine pound hammer just to stay alive. Well, there's cowboys, drunks, and Christians, mostly white and black and blue. They've all dialed the phone, collect to home from 16th Avenue. Ah, but one night in some empty room where no curtains ever hung, like a miracle, some golden words roll off of someone's tongue. And after years of being nothing, they're all looking back at you. And for a while, you'll go in style on 16th Avenue. Hey, it looks so uneventful, though so quiet and discreet. But a lot of lives were changed down on that little one-way street. Cause they walked away from everything just to see a dream come true. So God bless the boys who make the noise on 15th Avenue. Well, from the corners of the country, from the cities and the farms, we years and years of living tucked up underneath their arms. They walked away from everything just to see a dream come true. So God bless the boys who make the noise on 16th Avenue. Yeah, God bless the boys who make the noise on 16th Avenue. Thank you. Hello, my name is Floyd R. Turbo, Kenosha citizen, American patriot, veteran, and former clothing consultant to Alderman Kurt Wicklund. I have some things to get off my chest and this is my editorial. First, what is this big deal to extend our dopey trolley? Forget him. <laughs> Forgot. <laughs> For 10 years, this has gone to nowhere. It cost the taxpayers hundreds of thousands of dollars to operate and has taken thousands of hours just for the drivers to figure out the route. The only thing about the trolley is that it has provided a safe haven for 50,000 midgets a year who appear to be the only people who ride this overpriced amusement debacle. I am a man for gun control. I say call in an airstrike and let the rubble slide into Lake Michigan and then maybe it could end up being a water park for short people who like to get their tax statements all wet. The next gripe on my mind is building a new homeless shelter. I am not against helping the disadvantaged, but my thought is to put it out in the 17th district, give them all snow shovels, and get ready for the next impassable half-inch snowfall. This is what they call no-brainer. And what's up with the school district wanting me to vote for a $16 million referendum for upgrades? Upgrades for what? New sports facilities? New stadiums? New practice fields? I say spend the $16 million on more free breakfast and lunches for all the snot-nosed little children. We could pick up all the unused roadkill that is left on our streets and in our potholes. And what could be better for our children than some squirrel, some possum, a tad of skunk, a pinch here, a pinch there, and shazam, breakfast of real champions. <clears throat> Being a student in the honors program and spending six years of the best years of my life in high school, I know what I'm talking about. I can tell you that, hey, I didn't have upgrades, and look at me. 
just good old fashioned reading, writing, uh, um, uh, um, math, instead of upgrades, I say up yours to 16 million. And speaking of snot nosed little kids, I've listened to those two morons that are on WLIP on Saturday mornings at 10 a.m., 10.50 on your radio dial. And what are they thinking? They call it the Kenosha Today Weekend Report. Man, you talk about a show about nothing. They should call it two guys who are barely smarter than fifth graders. This has to be uh, their cry for help or they just need more therapy. The only spot, bright spot, on the whole show is some gal named Shirley, probably not her real name, calls in and reads some dopey meatloaf recipe. And I think she's probably got the hots for Pete, the engineer. Thank God that we still have Lenny Palmer to warm our hearts. Speaking of hot air, I am v v v uh, strongly against replacing the roof at the Southport Beach House. That thing was made of tile back in the 1930s, and I it was supposed to last 3,000 years. Gee, I hope when smarter, someone smarter than me, ha ha, kept the receipt, so just maybe they can have it covered under the guarantee. My suggestion, one word, nuke it. Uh, you know, I can't be the only part, person here in Kenosha to do all this thinking. And speaking of 3,000 years, where the heck is our new casino? Why hasn't the governor approved this? It's pol political, you say? He's in bed with the Potawatomis, you suggest? I say, get out of bed, governor. Quit taking that little green money pill. Get over that four-hour deal. Call your medicine man and get on with it. In closing, I want to stand with pride and say that I am as proud as a monkey on a rock that I am from Kenosha. We were recently named number 49 of the best cities in which to live here in the United States of America. America. After all, we are number one in the number of people that are incarcerated per capita than anyone else on the planet. Therefore, I encourage everyone to change their lifestyles to help put Kenosha in the top 10. I, Floyd R. Turbo, will lead by example. I will be changing my lifestyle to be playing golf every day, drinking Long Island iced teas every afternoon, and chasing old women until the Viagra wears off. I go boy. My name is Floyd R. Turbo, and I approve this message. And this is Uncle Scotty Yeehaw. Barter, and welcome to the Kenosha Day Weekend Report, coming to you live from Studio A here at WIP AM 1050 on your dial. Rejoining our encounter group this morning, our sometimes, sometimes co-host, little Stevie Casey is back in our Kenosha Today Trolley Barn. Stevie, welcome. And welcome, and I got a question no, wait a minute. For you. No, I got wait, a just, question. Okay, just a second. I got to get to You forget the, we have uh, some decor yeah, so here. There's so little time. There's yeah. so little time. Uh, however, in the house, our video rec uh, recorder, coordinator. Yeah, yeah. Hi. Okay. Uh, yeah, okay. Thanks, Ron. <laughs> <laughs> and filling in for the traveling Pete Surgeon, uh, little Billy Lawrence is... Uh, now, Yes, you're right. Yeah, uh, we you, both have questions. Are you, yeah, are you in charge of the commercials? What's going what on? What are you telling us? There's, play, a, Vi a, there's a Viagra commercial well, so you on guys, the Kenosha today? I don't know. I haven't did not have that commercial on my show all week long. It just appears on Saturday. Well, it is, 10 and 11. It is sweetest day. <laughs> well, Stevie, and Stevie was on record earlier saying that we had a, a line of sponsors lined up here. Well, maybe, the, or maybe that's the may, deal. <laughs> maybe Vi who makes Viagra? Uh, Pfizer, right? Pfizer, maybe they'll support us, so, so to speak, so to speak. <laughs> I, we're never going to live this down a Viagra commercial. Viagra, the what, what's next? Depends. <laughs> what happens after you take that stuff? It depends. Uh. Lord, it's a miracle. <laughs> I got to tell you guys, if I experience that four-hour deal, Forget I'm not it. calling a doctor. I'm calling CNN. Hell with you guys. <laughs> After let me all, read this. it is sweetest day. <laughs> yeah, let me go, let uh, read these last two. Oliver, <laughs> by the way, yeah. I, uh, I always take a donut, a crawler, and a cup of coffee next door to Paul Trombino, yeah. and uh, he enjoys that. Now, I did, he didn't get donuts yesterday, though. I didn't bring in donuts yesterday. Okay. I usually take in a donut and a cup of coffee to visit my favorite barber. 
So why didn't you do it yesterday? Yeah, what happened? You ate them. <laughs> I'm not sure. <laughs> no comment. You'd rather not say. All right, we have a phone call. Yes, sir. Good morning. You're on Kenosha Today. Hi, uh, this is Paul. Hi, Paul. Paul what Bagnoni, how you doing? What what was that? <laughs> what a quartet. Talk about the A team. Yeah, we're oh, the, the we're the A team, yeah. all right. Z team. <laughs> hey, how do you like our new sponsor, uh, Pfizer with Viagra? It was real uplifting. <laughs> <laughs> you want to come and join be part of the act? Yeah, there, there you go, Paul. There you go. <laughs> What's up? Hey, I got a question for you. I, I got a, I gave away another softball book this week. Great. Yeah, yeah. But Paul's writing a new book. Yes. And the new book is called or we don't have a name for it. Well, it's called Remember the Time When, and at the bottom of the book it says a collection of hometown sports stories. Oh. So it's about all kinds of sports, and your very own Scott Barter has contributed like four or five little tales for the book already. Well, now, are you going to, is horse, are horseshoes <laughs> sports? Yes, yes. Okay, you know, okay. I throw a mean horseshoe. One of the finest horseshoe throwers really? in Kenosha history is John Holica. My neighbor taught me everything I know. I got to tell you, I, I throw a mean did shoe. You always what, have. Did you hear what Paul asked? You? No, go ahead, ask him, Paul. I said, "Do you take the shoes off, or do you just leave them on the horse when you throw them?" No, I leave them on. <laughs> <laughs> better, better chance for a ringer. You ever uh, lose one? You ever let one slip out of your hand? Uh, no, oh, not generally. But I throw the. Uh, <laughs> He's setting you up, can't you tell? <laughs> one and a one and a half turns. Some guys throw them where they go circle. Uh-huh. I throw them end over end. One and a half turns. Really? Yeah, that's, absolutely. That's the secret. Do you throw you're lying? You don't know anything. Paul, about it, have you ever thrown horseshoes? Pachi. But well, that's, that's close. A, yeah, that's the Italian <laughs> version of horseshoes. Oh well, I'm being dipped in. <laughs> so yeah, well, you, you other guys got to step up to the plate. No pun intended, and put some stories in there because you know you can't let Scott. You know. Well, but, well, you just heard the horseshoe you story. Gotta, you got to talk to some of the old bocce players from from the IA. In fact, one of them this week uh, just passed away. John Gaudio. He was a. How can I talk to him? Yeah, he was. Well, he was a. He was an outstanding. He was a big award winner with bocce ball, and you know, of course, Mario Cicchini had his own bocce ball court in his backyard, and you know, he's gone as well. But uh, yeah, there's a lot of history just with that sport alone. I guess we'll have to get back to you, Paul. I did okay. my part, and uh, the spelling wasn't all that bad, was it? Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> yeah, what? The stories are hilarious. I read them to several people, and they both all cracked up. On the spelling or the stories? Well, I, I, I edited them before I read them. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. Hey, Paul. Uh, Paul, happy sweetest day. You too, Scott. Oh, Jesus. I mean, I didn't say that. Geez. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, I'm all flustered now. Yeah. <laughs> all right. All right, Bye, Paul. Guys. Thanks. A lot of love going on. Hey, when you get over that, a Viagra commercial. When you guys buy that, do you, do you buy direct? Do you buy bulk? Or uh, I mean, w- are we talking horseshoes again? Or no, we're we're t- <laughs> that's provocative. <laughs> a couple of items we're talking about: the homeless shelter and uh, what you think is a uh, uh, dog park. Let's talk uh, dog park. That's opening up too. Oh, the dog park is this opening week, up. Yeah. Plus, you know, the did the a new, nice job. The new poll uh, come come out Wednesday for governor uh, Mary Burke and uh, Scott Walker, supposedly in a dead heat, and they had their last. Uh, debate last night, so I think that's going to go down to the wire. It could be interesting. No, it's not. What do you mean it's not? It's, it's, it's not. Well, what do you think is going to happen? I know what's going to happen. Well, well tell us. <laughs> oh, soothsayer. <laughs> go ahead. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I predict Scott Walker, whether you like it or not, is going to be the next guy. I didn't say I didn't like it. I just said, well, you, okay. Well, I'm not making a, it's gonna be a not forming an opinion. I just think that Scott Walker is going to pull it out in the last couple of weeks. Well, we only got two weeks left. Right, exactly. Okay. Right. Exactly. Well, we'll see. I may be if, wrong. If you have a question or a comment, uh, 262-694-1050. Now, here's a, this should be a good question. Good morning. You're on Kenosha today. Well, we'll see. I may be wrong. Hello. Nope. Got to turn your radio down. Yep, I was there working on it. Okay. Who's this? Uh, this is, uh, hello, Shirley. This is your <laughs> alderman. <laughs> Mr. Wicklin. <laughs> yes, sir. Well, I just want to say, commend you guys for truth in advertising. You really <laughs> didn't have anything to talk about today, and set out to prove wow, it. Wow, wow. Hey, Kurt. <laughs> Kurt, I got a place. Uh, I'm wearing the same red T-shirt that uh, Bill is, is wearing. And, yeah. uh, and Is this the Kenosha Today We Can Report uniform? Yeah, we could. The official uh, barter get on board. Get and, I, and I have a feeling, Kurt, that you and I and Bill Lawrence <laughs> all wear the same size. <laughs> well, just... Line up some white beards, and we're ready for Christmas. Yeah. <laughs> hey, you, you know, uh, there was a Voice of the People article uh, last week by your predecessor about computer stuff. Oh. And I want to th- commend you for the ordinance that you championed that makes mandatory that every, or- every alderman has to wear a white three-piece suit with a lime green shirt 
uh, at least once uh, every three months. Uh, no, no, I didn't wear the green shirt with the white suit. That was with the black suit. Well, Kurt, thank, thank you for correcting me. Kurt, I told, I told you, I told you a year ago when you when you started talking about an interest in running for alderman. What did I tell you? I said, get out in the streets and meet the people. Take the issues to the front doorsteps. Stay off of Facebook. Stay off of the internet. Don't respond to people on Facebook. Don't respond, and, and, and that's exactly what you're doing. You're being criticized because, what, you don't have a Facebook page? Well, la-di-da. Yeah, but he's got a snappy wardrobe. He's got a snappy wardrobe, <laughs> I'm telling you. you know, I, I, never, I never thought my name would be mentioned the same sentence as snappy wardrobe, but <laughs> life continue throws you surprises. Well, you know, the only critical thing I'd say well, was being white. It was after Labor Day, but, you know, we're willing to forgive that. That was your first time out of the, out that of the box. That was a special day. A special day. Special you day. know, so, i got to tell you, as recently as four years ago, uh, I don't even think I ever emailed a constituent even one time. And now, of course, it's it's more prevalent now, but, uh, you know, get a somebody would call me, I'd show up at the house within within a couple of hours, and we'd deal with it face-to-face. That's, let's, Stay off of Facebook. Get out from behind a computer you don't, screen you don't know and get back into the streets. That's because you don't know how to operate a computer. Well, it doesn't make any difference. I, I was successful for how many years, oh, Scott? She's uh, 22 years. 22 years, yeah. So, Kurt, you have another comment so we don't have to listen to this? <laughs> <laughs> well, I, you guys are talking about the uh, the Shalom Center yeah. and uh, the recent vote. And um, I think that there, I, I, I went and met with, the, uh, with Fran uh, Hansen yesterday just briefly, uh, follow up on the meeting and such. Um, <clears throat> The COP is really going to be a uh, significant issue uh, going forward with this because that's going to set the residency limits. And um, I really think it's it's vital for everyone in the city and especially the Shalom uh, board and, and their supporters, and, and that's most of the city right there, to understand that I, I really don't see 84 residents being approved for that, that okay. location. Um, it's... Just looking at the the um, floor pan that they laid out, it's just conceptual drawing, but it gives you an idea how many beds you can fit into a given you know square footage. Yeah. And I really don't think that they could. I don't think you can just scale up and add more beds and and stuff them in there and have a, a the facility that they want to have. So going forward, I, I think they really got to. I, I urged uh, Ms. Hansen to get some good drawings, get an architect on there, and. You know, lay out an a, a, a actual floor pan with all the power plant and the ventilation chases and all that room set aside and see how many beds you can fit in there because um, if they want to go to that location, I really don't think they're going to have enough room to fold down the INS program. I yeah. think the INS program is going yeah, to I've continue. Got Kurt, you and I have spoken a number of times about this. I, you know, I've always supported the Shalom Center. Nobody can criticize me for that. I've just yeah. got some really serious concerns you know about this project, and I and I hope there are concerns that will be addressed on some level and and uh, and properly dispersed of. But uh, well, it sounds uh, like you're, tough, you're all over. It. Good. That's where you can do a good service here is, is communicate that fact out and now, uh, what will the capacity be and, and make sure that that does not get lost in in the planning process because I think that is really the key point going forward. Well, and I've shared many of my concerns with you as well, but I have a question. When you met with sure. Ms. Hansen. Was it on a Facebook page, or did you meet face-to-face? <laughs> he went, he no, we met face-to-face. Face-to-face? Although, ironically, she did send me a Facebook friend request. Oh, for heaven's <laughs> sakes, now. Fa- but no, fa- we, I, I believe in talking face-to-face. And, um, really? You don't believe in communicating over Facebook like your predecessor? I think that's. I think he used that as a shortcut in and thought that he was in touch with the populace, but you only get in touch with a sliver of the populace that there way. You know. Take it yeah. to the doorsteps, Kurt. That's hey, what I told you. Uh, is, there a, uh, is there a council meeting tomorrow or this week, Monday? Yes, there is Monday. And uh, actually, a very interesting point. It, I have to uh, look into what we're going to be uh, hearing more, but they're going to be talking about the Heritage House. There's an issue on the agenda about that. And I really don't have any more information at this point other than that will be on the agenda. So okay, my, there's my, there's an issue that's uh, very uh much on uh, Kenosha's minds, and I think we're going to have some news about it. Okay, my last question uh, is, what can we look forward to uh, in wardrobe-wise? You've got something coming out I'll of the probably, closet? I think, or... uh, I, think I, will, uh, I will debut what I intend to wear uh, at uh, the Kenosha Symphony Orchestra's Ode to Beethoven, the oh. kicking off the 75th anniversary <laughs> with uh, one so, of my, my favorite piece of classical music, Beethoven's Ninth. Hey, I gotta, uh, uh, everybody's got to tune in then Monday. Uh, council meeting starts at 7 just to see uh, 
what you're wearing. Well, I get another. Co- okay. I get another question for you, Kurt. You know, years ago they made a big stink about my attendance because uh-huh. I m- probably missed more meetings than I than I attended. Rumor has it there are two members of the licensing and permit committee who've only attended two out of ten licensing and permit committees. Why? Why isn't anybody making an issue about that? Well, um, you don't on public <laughs> record. Uh, I don't know exactly. You well, I've already requested is, that. But, um, I'm, I'm going to put together the percentages, and I'm going to start talking about this because I was uh, criticized for missing meetings, and now you got two members who don't even show up for their committee assignments. Hey, S- Steve, you don't show up here, and we don't care. <laughs> 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 we encourage that type of uh, activity. <laughs> right. All right, Kurt, keep up the good work. I'm looking forward to uh, viewing the council meeting on Monday just to see what you're wearing. Well, God love you guys for all the interest you, you, you bring to the city. It's a... Uh, it's a great, uh, it's a great town to live in. Yeah, yeah, Thanks absolutely, it is. All right, uh, one other item, a couple other items. You can call us at two six two six nine. What time is it? Two fifty. And I gotta go. I gotta go pump the meter because <laughs> somebody took my parking place, and now I'm parking in a metered spot outside. A metered? It W L I P. Well, I I, I missed had that one I missed two or three <laughs> Saturdays in a row, and my parking space is gone. You, you know, I. Earlier. You're lucky you got a microphone. <laughs> I'm renegotiating the contract. <laughs> Bill, would you negotiate the contract? I got with a little me? loose change here if you need yeah, it. Yeah. Hey, an issue came up uh, recently, um, and this was rather sad that the city um, fire unit, uh, what do you call an ambulance, took a 10 or 11 minutes to get to a, a call. But uh, this is actually being studied, according to the city administrator, Frank Bassetti. It went to, uh, by order of the city council, it went to a. Um, Apparently that bits, alderman yeah. wasn't aware that there's a study yeah, going on. I didn't mention it. I mean, it was costing us 20, 29000 It's going to be back in November to see if we need a fifth unit, whether we do or not. Uh, who knows? Uh, to, to add another unit, you know, what we should be doing, in my view, is uh, forget paying $3 million for the dopey trolley. There I go again, calling it a dopey trolley. I'm Shame on me. That's, I tried to could correct myself from calling it a dopey trolley. Maybe we should buy a new ambulance for him. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I'm sorry. Were you still talking? <laughs> Were you still talking? Okay, you got. It. You want to bring up a topic? Go ahead, there, Mister One Dimensional. <laughs> I told you I've got to bring up a topic. Are we back to Viagra now? <laughs> <laughs> Gosh, I hope not. Boy, talk hey, about One Dimensional, Bill. Who it's... has who has yeah. more fun on Sweetest Day? How are you spending Sweetest Day tonight? I buy bulk, not the Viagra. The cards. <laughs> How are you... The cards. Well, Sweetest Day is one of those tweener ones. You know, tweener. Yeah, yeah. Maybe, maybe not. You never know. I, I'm but, single. Uh, I will just. See which way the wind's going. And well, we'll i go got to call Summer's Garden, and i got to get the flowers delivered to my wife this afternoon. I always send pink roses on Sweetest Day. Don't shield. you think uh, a little preparation would have been a little bit uh I didn't know it was Sweetest one? Day until 5 minutes to 10. She texted me and said, Happy Sweetest Day. Well, we were about to tell you. She's I mean, dropping a hint. Yeah, dropping a hint. Boy, well, it's, it's not be... as if I'm going to run out and buy her a Silverado, for heaven's sakes. Well, you don't work for you big know, time. I don't, <laughs> make, I don't make big time money like the radio guys <laughs> here. Yeah. You know? <laughs> the problem was I bought it from a guy down on Highway 31. Uh, it was parked on the side of the road with the hood up. Oh, uh, there you go. <laughs> Pete Sargent's <laughs> uncle. Now, how are you spending Sweetest Day? Uh, well, let's see. What's on the schedule for tonight? Well, you got to uh, do the volleyball thing uh, first, yeah, right? Well, uh, that's, well. Uh, Very well said, any, Bill. you have any ideas? <laughs> you, guys, you guys are. Well, now, Captain Ron is making, are you making prime rib tonight? No. No, I'm going to get it this, this week sometime. Right? Okay. So okay. Sweetest Day is not on your no, on your uh, radar. You know, is, it, is it really a prime rib holiday, though? Sweetest day. Listen, Saturdays are a prime rib holiday. <laughs> At the Casey household, it's Monday through Saturday. <laughs> hey, my wife made uh, sweet potato soup last Sunday. Hey, uh, <laughs> did anybody want to comment on that? No, but I have to read this. American I hate vegetables. <laughs> American Legion Post Twenty One. Haunted Hall. Bill, is that all in our drop section? No, you that's... Just, uh, you're just, just going out and... I'm let, let you guys borrow my catalog oh, today. Oh, 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 is that what that is? <laughs> the American Legion Post 21 Haunted Hall uh, open uh, October 24th, 5th, and 6th. Oh, I hate seven haunted houses. Uh, I hate uh, haunted so, houses. Well, you, this is a promo. These people are doing well. No, they're doing well, but I will not go to haunted little, houses. Okay, and I don't watch. I've never seen a single horror movie. Really? Yeah. Watched one at the drive-in with uh, Becky Larson... And uh, her cousin Lynn Larson and Don Thomas, and I was driving my dad's brand new Chevy Caprice. Yeah, can, can, and I, when can I, I when finish this for these folks? <laughs> what was the one where he came out of the water and the canoe? Was that one of the? Uh, Is that the Chevy creature canoe. from the Black Lagoon? No, Jason. the the Jason, the guy oh, that okay. came back from the dead, okay. scared the I, bejeebies out of us. We spelled beer and cold duck all over my beer? dad's brand new. You drank duck. beer underage. All right, now, I promise. I these, was sixteen. I promise these good folks from the American <laughs> Legion Post Twenty One to legal? announce. 
their their haunted hall. Uh, October 24th, 5th and 6th from 7 to 10. October 30th and 31st from 7 to 11. Adults are 5. Children are 3, 5 uh, and under are ordered free. And Mr. Steve Casey is ordered not to attend at all. Now, do you know where we were watching that movie? Freddy. Well, who's Freddy? The guy with Freddy the mask? Freddy Krueger? Yeah. No, yeah. He had the claws. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that was but him. But the mask was, was Michael Freddy... Myers from the yeah. Halloween films. Yeah, the Halloween films. Yeah, we were yeah. at the Mid-City Drive-In. Hey, when is... Uh, Remember the Mid-City yeah. Drive-In on Highway A and Sheridan Road? So you said you... But you said you've never seen a horror film, but Well, that was the last one I saw scared the... I thought it was having a heart attack. <laughs> <laughs> You I mean, hate <laughs> horror movies. I hate horror movies, and I hate haunted houses. Last horror I movie like I saw were clips of my first wedding. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, you can't say that on, on radio anymore, can you? Although there is a horror movie on Monday night. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Tune in, Channel 25. Channel 25. Yeah. City I, I Council. Got, I can't wait to see what Wicklin's wearing to this deal. Well, he's a snappy dresser. I see that. A white three-piece suit. A cold horse. Oh, yeah, he's a cold horse. Well... Uh, we got to take him to the casual mail. There you go. We got to take him to the see casual if mail. And see left. if they got any red T-shirts left. Size five X. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this was an article in the paper. Budget deficit drops to six-year low, four hundred eighty-three billion. This is our federal government. The budget is four hundred eighty-three billion. That's a low. Right. Boy, who's uh, who's doing the accounting work over there? Now, did you want to hear about the sweet potato soup? <laughs> no, no. I want to talk about... Uh, I don't care about that. What the hell's the matter with you? Well, who cares about sweet potatoes? Who cares about sweet potato soup? My wife made it. Well, I think you're in enough trouble. See, you're trying to kiss up to your wife now that you completely <laughs> forgot. Do a sweetest, sweetest day, date. Yeah. yeah. Now you're trying to drag us down to your level just to make up for You know for what? Her. I've missed you so much every Saturday. <laughs> <laughs> you coming back next week? Uh, next week I should be here. Oh. Oh, Bill, you're 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 in no, the car. Oh, your no. car's already running. The yeah, that's, that's right. hard. You're out of here. I'm am I going to have a, right am I going to have a parking place? Well, you're winded because and you where, have to walk and next another, to another and feet. another point. Where in the heck are the donuts? Well, Donut Dave is uh, yeah. Wait a minute. I'm he's, here. He's down taking his boat out of the harbor. Well, what did you What did you do to, to him to get him? Nothing. Upset? He brought him here last week. Yeah. Yeah, two two in one person. Yeah, in person. He was right here. Well, I wasn't. Neither was I. Yeah. No, my boat's still in the water. Oh, is that is waiting for us to come down? Remember yeah. for the you know, big I gotta party. Tell you, in all yeah. fairness, this was the worst boating season I've ever lived through. The weather in June was horrible. July was halfway decent. Got cold in August. We haven't been down uh, to the marina since Labor Day. You know, it's horrible. Usually, fall sailing is beautiful sailing. Well, we had a big party at Donut Dave's boat when we were already had the we prime rib and champagne. We tipped it. We were rocking and, rocking and rolling down there. What the hell are you talking about? <laughs> he was just three doors down. From was that one place. of the Was that one of the production meetings I missed? We a one. For donuts in the water. Oh, by the way, I'm going to miss Monday's council meeting as well. Why is that? Well, because this is the thing. I didn't even know this. I can't even watch you on Wednesday night. We switched to AT and T Uverse. They don't have the access channel. Sure, they do. No, they don't. Yeah, they do. What they channel? The government channel. I'll, I'll look it up for you. I'll no. tell you Monday morning. You know, I think Bill's right because that was one of the uh, yeah. prerequisites that AT and T had can get, to have. You, you could go. They have a city government channel. And it'll take you to all kinds of uh, cities in their coverage area, and then it'll get you to that. Are you I suggesting you want to tune me? I'll in tell on you Wednesdays? Monday morning. I'll look it up for you. Well, I only wanted to watch a couple weeks ago when my son was on the show. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want tune in to watch. Look at you for heaven's sakes. Oh. Well, you know, Casey, you can watch it online. Afterwards. So now, now that everybody knows, when you call in on Monday for this uh, goofy one man's an opinion, uh, goofy one man's <laughs> opinion, because yeah, it's not dopey was, at least. That, well, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I tried to clean it up. Oh, my. All right. wait a minute, wait and, a minute, and that's going to wrap it up for us. Here <laughs> Are we done this morning from the corner of Happy? I got and more things wrong. I want to talk about. Dave, we want to thank all our sponsors, <laughs> listeners, for participating. Holy cow, also, our we're special done thanks to little Billy Lawrence for engineering this morning's train wreck. Finally, uh, bringing us some professionalism, decorum. Bill, next Down week, to an green. all-time low. Green T-shirts. <laughs> Wear yeah. green. Next week, yeah. <laughs> uh, just a reminder, tune in to Channel 14 Wednesdays We need more time. There's 9. never enough time. PM also on Sundays at 6 p.m. for our television broadcast. You know, today's show. And i got to read my sponsors real quick. Boathouse, Pub and Eater, Gauss, Gerhards, Casey Family Options, Charlie V's Kids Fa- Foundation, KRS Painting, Lee Plumbing. Where did the uh, time Electric go? Heating and Cooling, The Brat Stop. Uh, Kenosha for Open Honest Government, Small Business Technology Solutions, and uh, so from our channel, uh, where are we? Studio A. This is here at WIP. This has been, you got to play something snappy. Uh, how about this? It's 11 o'clock.